Are you planning a trip to Yosemite National Park? Then you're in the right place because this video is going to walk you through the logistics of getting to the park, especially if you're driving an RV, because there's some very important things that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you know so you don't end up stuck in some tight situations. Also then we'll go through our trip report of our trip with our kids and show you some of the highlights and tips and tricks on exploring the park and making it fun and educational for your kids. And lastly, we'll talk about some camping options you have at Yosemite National Park with your RV. So here's the map of California and you probably know that Yosemite National Park is located here in the central part of pretty much the Sierra Nevadas. Now the Sierra Nevada range um, is no joke when it comes to mountain ranges. I kind of blew it off coming from Colorado and the Rocky Mountains, but these are some intense mountains and some intense mountain passes. And really there's not a, any ways to cross from the east and the west of the Sierra Nevadas other than heading down south all the way to Bakersfield. So if you were doing you know, Death Valley and stuff, you could take this 395 along the east side and swoop around here from Bakersfield and then come up and hit up Sequoia and Kings Canyon, which we did in the reverse because we came up from the top and then came down. In the winter months, you can only come across through I-80 and then head down to get to Yosemite. And then during the summer months and early fall, Tioga Pass is open, which is this road Highway 120 that actually cuts across from 395 from the east and the west side of Yosemite. And we ended up staying in Mammoth Lakes and then we came up and did this Tioga Road. So you'll see in the video what that Tioga Pass looks like. It's really not that bad when it comes to mountain passes. Um, and then within here, you have three different options to access into Yosemite National Park. Let me zoom into those specifically. So this is the detailed look of Yosemite National Park. As I was mentioning, Tioga Pass comes along. This road closes in the winter. So we did this trip the last week of October and we barely caught the end of the season because pretty much a week later, they had a pretty bad snowstorm and this road closed. So that's really the end of the season. Really in earlier, no, October, this, some of the stuff along here starts closing off like the visitor center and things that are up on that entrance but the valley remains open longer. You can see there's three roads to come into the valley. You have a highway 120 along the top. You have 140, which is the El, El Portal entrance. And then, and this one's called the Big Oak entrance. And then you have Wawona Road, which comes up and that is highway 41. Now, if you are in a large RV like we are, your only access is this El Portal. And even then there is a limitation on the heights. So the specifics on the tunnels, Big Oak entrance has three tunnels along here. The lowest one being a 10 foot, three inch clearance. So that's too low for our RV. Wawona, which comes up from the south, tunnel view is a 10 foot, two inch clearance. And then our portal has the largest clearance which is at 12 foot 10 inches at the curb. So maybe if you only need 13 or a little more than 13, you could take that in your RV. We did not want to risk it. Plus we didn't want to deal with first come first serve to get into Yosemite and stay in the actual park or be without hookups. So what a lot of people do is stay either in Groveland, which is to the north. You have kind of heading out here to Merced um, down here on the west or you could head south and stay outside of the park down through the south entrance. So those are really your three options when it comes to being in a large RV, and then you're just going to need a vehicle to get you into actual Yosemite Valley. Even though there's a shuttle in the valley, you'll need a vehicle to get you from your RV park into the valley. So we are climbing up Tioga Pass, which is on the east side of Sierra Nevadas as you're heading to the entrance center for Yosemite National Park from the east. Speed limit is 50 miles an hour. We are doing about 35 in third gear and we're keeping it in third gear so we can kind of hold ourselves and keep our speed and get up this mountain.
plenty of shoulder, pull off space. Definitely not anything scary. I was really worried about this pass, but Jeremy's done a lot of pass driving in Colorado and Wyoming, so I think this probably won't be anything too bad. The weather is nice today as well. So, not too bad. A little bit windy. Hey there, everyone. We're here at Tioga Pass, and uh, up here, uh, just taking a little break, there's our Seneca right there. And you can see behind me, uh, traffic's moving pretty easy. We're up here at the top, it's very beautiful. Um, it's cool, but sunny. And uh, yeah, the rig's having no trouble whatsoever. Here's a, here's a big rig going down the hill there, going a little fast, probably could use their downshift. But uh, yeah. Not bad. <laughs> Tioga Road takes you from the west side to the east side or vice versa, pretty much from Highway 395 in California over through the entrance of the park and then onto it becomes Highway 120, which will also take you out of the park on the north end. There's great places to stop on this 39 mile scenic drive. This is some footage from Tanaya Lake, which is one of the great places that we decided to stop. There's a spot where you can even kind of pull over on the side of the road with your RV and even a tow vehicle and park there for a little while if you want to just explore the park and hang around this lake. You can even do a bit of a hike around the lake. We just took a little bit of time to hang out by the lake and take some pictures. This trip was the last week of October. Tioga Road does close pretty soon after that, sometimes even in October. It just depends when the first big snowfall is for the fall. And once that first snowfall happens, then they close this road and you would have to bypass by going all the way up to Reno and around Highway 180, which is like a four to five hour detour if you can't get through Tioga Road going from one side of Yosemite to the other side. So be sure you're checking up on that if you're heading here during the fall months. Other than making sure that Tioga Road is actually open if you want to head through this part of the park, I think fall is really one of the best times to visit Yosemite National Park. Part of what makes it great, in addition to the colors, which are fantastic, we really didn't hit the peak of the colors. That would have probably been about the second week of October, but the colors were still fantastic and the crowds were virtually non-existent. So anywhere we wanted to go and park, we were able to just park and pull in and enjoy and hike around and see everything that we wanted to see without any sort of problem. Our next stop on this road was Olmsted Point, which is the point where you can really see Half Dome out in the distance, which is one of the big granite rocks where it's kind of chopped in half and it looks like half of a sphere. And there's really cool rock formations around here as well. So it was cool for the kids to get out and be able to walk around a little bit. There's parking here that is sufficient for a rig. Of course, we're driving the RV at this point and towing behind the Jeep. So you're able to stop here. You gotta make sure you get this uh, entrance though. It's really easy to miss the entrance for this point because it's kind of coming around a curve. So just be sure you're going slow enough so that you can make it into the different points where you can pull into a parking lot and um, check it out. So you can see here the parking lot, there's our rig. So as long as you're pulled off to the side, there's enough parking. And of course, if there's not a big crowd of people, then you'll be able to get parking and stay here even with your RV. And there's plenty of parking for cars, as long as it's not a high traffic time of year. We didn't make any other stops really on Tioga Road at this point, just kind of headed to our campground with plans to head into Yosemite Valley on the next morning. And I want to tell you a little bit about the organization and the layout with the map on Yosemite Valley before moving into that video real quickly. This is a close up of the valley and um, what you're not seeing here are the entrance roads in. So of course we talked about those three ways that you can take to get in. When you actually come in, we came in through Big Oaks, um, you're coming in through here. We did a bypass and went on the side of the road and checked out Bridal Veil Fall. So that's going to be one of the first things that you see in our video. And then you continue along and this is a one-way loop. So it goes up and it loops around to come back out of the park. Or you can cut across here and do the loop again. There's also a road that will go up here and get you to the campgrounds and come back down. And as you can see here, there's a shuttle system that they use in Yosemite. 
So in the last year, because of COVID, they were not running the shuttle system, but on most years, they run the shuttle system and the green loop shows you what the shuttles do year round and the purple loop shows you what's just available in the summer. So if you were staying at one of these lodges or you were staying in a campground with your RV, you could then just take the shuttle system and enjoy seeing a bunch of these sites in the winter months and, and then our fall. And then even in the summer, you can even go further out to some of these other locations. We just used our Jeep the whole time and we were able to find parking at every location we went to. It was no problem because it was so late in the fall and um, that worked out just fine for us. It's kind of nice when you have kids not to be reliant on a shuttle system, but most of the year it's really busy here and during the summer, expect to have to take the shuttle system here. So I'll guide you through. We're gonna go through. We parked in here and then we walked around the village for a while. We went to the Awani Hotel. Um, so we'll show you everything except the campground. We never did spend any time at the campground, but we'll get onto the video. Yosemite Valley really is the crown jewel for Yosemite National Park. There's a bunch of other places that are beautiful within the park, but if you're only coming here for the first time, or you may be only come here for one time your whole life, be sure that Yosemite Valley is in your planning and one of the places where you'll come. This, of course, is the Highway 120 entrance, and you can see kind of what the road and the terrain and everything is like. Like I said, the Sierras are nothing to joke about. This is some pretty rugged uh, switchbacks and steep inclines, and of course, lots of tunnels. So this particular route has three tunnels. You'll see us go through one of them, and we are in the Jeep at this point in time, so we could not take our large RV into the park, at least not through this entrance but you can get a feel for what it's like driving into the park. The campground where we stayed was about 40 minutes from the entrance to Yosemite, um, where you saw us going in there and the park rangers are there checking your maps and giving you guides and everything. And then from the point that you enter till you actually get into the valley is probably another 30 minutes or so. So just expect that when you're staying outside of the park and you're staying somewhere with electrical hookups and whatnot, that you've probably got a good hour plus until you're heading into the valley and able to start seeing things in the valley. See, here's one of those tunnels, 10-4. Yep, our RV uh, would lose its top here on this tunnel. And as you can see, there's nowhere to turn around or pull around. So if you are pulling a big trailer or you're in a big RV, you are stuck because you can't even, I guess you just have to do a bunch of Y turns and get yourself turned around if you got down here and realized that you're not going to fit. Better to just realize that you're not going to fit and plan to leave the RV out of the park. So that is what we did because we had heard about this ahead of time. Unfortunately, even our RV trip planner um, with RV Trip Wizard and Google Maps and everything else told us we could still take these routes and get into the park, but that was not true. Fortunately, I had heard about it from other people and you can even check the NPS website and see the tunnel clearance issues for each of the different routes to get in if you want to double check what those numbers are. So you can see it's big, beautiful trees and wonderful areas. They actually have three sequoia groves that are throughout the park where they have the really big trees and you can check out those different groves. The Tuolumne Grove has 25 sequoias. That's up by Toyoga Road. The Merced Grove has 20 sequoias. You really have to hike in to get to that, about a three hour hike, three and a half mile round trip to get through into that. And then the Mariposa Grove, which is down through the Wawona Tunnel on the south side. We were heading to Sequoia National Park after visiting Yosemite. So we decided to skip any of the Sequoia Groves in Yosemite. But if you weren't also going to Sequoia National Park, you'd probably wanna check those out here while you're in Yosemite, because it's really cool to see these magnificent giant trees. Um, out in the distance here, you can see we're coming up to Bridal Veil Falls. And so we're going to head into um, the parking lot area, this most more scenic areas and stuff, but we're heading into the parking lot area for Bridal Veil Falls. So you can see what that looks like. that lot for Bridal Veil Falls. This does fill up pretty quickly, so we did want to make sure this was one of our first stops in case it became a problem to find parking later. 
It's not too bad for car parking, uh, assuming the volume is low. This is early in the morning. You can see there's a travel trailer up ahead, but generally we didn't see a lot for RVs. Couple of trailers. Um, see, you can see some buses and vans, but nothing as large as our RV. And it wouldn't really be a great place to try to park if you do have a large RV with you. Bridal Veil Falls is an easy half mile round trip hike. Probably take you about 20 minutes to head up there and head back. And you can see the waterfall heading down right there. Um, what's really cool about this is it's one of the few waterfalls you can actually see this late in the fall because Yosemite Falls, the big fall, is not running still at this time of year. But it's a cool place where you can just easily walk up by there and be able to see it in the distance. As you continue driving, you can see El Capitan out there in the distance. We're gonna cover that more when we head to that on our way back. And we're continuing into the valley here. There's some great spots where you can park really right close to the valley, right into kind of the downtown area. There's a big parking lot, plenty of parking. Well, plenty of parking when it's off season. If you're here in the summer, you better get here early because it does fill up. Um, but that's the place where you'll park and then be able to ride the shuttle bus throughout the village. Before we quite made it to the heart of the Yosemite Valley, we actually found this um, parking spot where we were able to stop. There's some restrooms here and then there's a bridge that'll take you over the river and you can get a little bit closer view of Yosemite Falls from the base. So it's really a beautiful spot to come over and hike around and check out some of the sites. And of course the fall colors were absolutely spectacular. You can see there that Yosemite Falls is dried up because this is the fall and, and there's just not enough water this time of year. So you can see where the image was of where the falls usually would be spraying. But while we were there, you could not see the falls running. Yosemite Falls, which is dry this time of year, but the fall colors are sure beautiful. As you walk under the bridge and get closer to the water, you can really see how crystal clear this water is and how beautiful it is. You can look out in the distance there too and see a little bit of where that parking lot is at that we're actually parked at right now. We did have to wait a little bit of time for a spot, not much, a couple of minutes for a spot to get into this lot. As you head into the village parking area, there's a great bridge where you can get a nice shot in front of Half Dome. The main heart of the village is actually pretty full of a lot of different resources. So they have a medical clinic here. They have um, the visitor center is located here. There's a post office that's here. There's some places where you can get a bite to eat and grab some lunch and it's all within walking distance so it's easy to walk around to the different locations there's an ansel adams gallery that's in the area as well and then the uh, visitor center i might have mentioned and then kind of great different learning areas for the kids with the old museum that is in the area so plenty of learning opportunities in this area great place to stop kids can get their junior ranger packets and work on those while you're in this area there's different ranger led tours that are out of this area so the downtown area to the village definitely great to check out here's a little bit of views from the museum and a little bit of our video of walking around and seeing some of the cool different spots they show you kind of the uh, ways that the native people would have lived when they were in this area and you can check out these different dwellings there's indoor exhibits that include um, baskets and different types of items that you'd find in that area and there's usually somebody there to answer questions and make it more of like a living museum for the kids not just for kids adults will love it too but this is a great spot to complete those junior ranger packets they do need to attend either a ranger led item or go through and do the living museum and talk to somebody there in order to complete the packets and they're sticklers about that so you got to be sure that you have enough time to get that done during your visit here's the image of the parking lot so you can see what that kind of looks like and then we kept going on our drive kind of starting to work our way out of this area 
At this point, you could take the loop and start working your way out of the valley or kind of go deeper and go to the Awani Hotel, which we really wanted to check out this lodge. So we kept driving on the one-way loop, which will take you up to the Awani Hotel. There's quite a bit of parking when you get up by the hotel. So uh, obviously because there's guests staying there and we were able to park there. It didn't matter that we were not guests and you can go in and tour the hotel and kind of check it out. It's really a beautiful lodge to check out. And if you ever wanted to stay somewhere, it'd be a beautiful place to stay. They actually have different celebrations throughout the year and their Christmas celebration is supposed to be fantastic with like a multi-course meal and entertainment and just a lot of really cool stuff. So beautiful place to check out any time of year but in the fall it's really nice and you can see all the amazing architecture and some of the cool details and native inspiration and just some of the beautiful sites here at the Awani Lodge. As we were heading out of the Valley Loop, we then stopped at the Al Capitan picnic area. And there's actually a bunch of street parking along the side of the road where people could just pull their cars or even RVs over and be able to take some pictures and enjoy seeing Al Capitan. So if you didn't know, Al Capitan is a 3,500 foot granite monolith that just juts out from the base and towers up into the sky. And climbers actually love to come here and climb this. So when we were there, we saw a number of people that were climbing it and some had tents. So they were sleeping out for the night on the side of the mountain, which is just amazing. I'd really recommend if you have Disney Plus to check out the movie Free Solo. It's on Disney Plus right now. And it's about, it's a true story about a climber who actually climbed this without any ropes. We then started driving the Wobona Road route, which takes you up to tunnel view. You can see here that tunnel is like 10 foot, two inch. I think that bus is not going through there for sure, but you can get some beautiful views of El Capitan, Half Dome and Bridal Veil Falls all in the same shot from that point, which just makes it a fantastic spot to stop and be able to see the views. There's some different um, interpretive signs and things that tell you about the area. And then what we did is we parked on the other side of the road, on the south side of the road. There's a small parking lot, holds maybe 10 cars or so, but we parked there and then started the hike up to Inspiration Point. And this was fantastic because nobody was on this hike. So we totally got to have this fantastic view of the Inspiration Point without having anybody else around us. And it's not that crazy of a hike. There's a little bit of a distance, less than a mile for sure. And um, you are in some dirt, you are doing some elevation gain, but you're not dealing with a bunch of boulders or anything really difficult or that would be tough on knees or anything. Kids could easily do this hike and, and our kids usually were able to do this hike. But it was really probably one of the highlight items of our trip is being able to climb up this hike and be able to see the sun setting on the valley and getting that fantastic view of Al Capitan, Half Dome and Bridal Veil vale Falls all at the same time. We're driving through the Wobona Tunnel right here. We were actually trying to work our way out to Glacier Point perhaps, um, but we realized that it was, I think about 30 miles out to Glacier Point. It was just too far for us to go and we were losing our light. So we weren't going to see much once we got there. In terms of camping for Yosemite National Park, we actually stayed outside of the park. I think this was Yosemite Pines was the name of our campsite. A little tight for our big rig, um, but it did work. And it wasn't too terribly far, about 30 minutes from the entrance. They do have campgrounds within Yosemite. Some of them are open year round, but very few are will work for a larger RV. So you need to make sure you check that out. A lot of the ones within the valley are actually first come first serve. Um, or they have campground reservations for some of them. They're up to five months in advance. So you need to make sure like you're ready to go in that five months before the time that you want to go there and try to reserve that because they really book up quickly the ones that have availability for reservations. And if you're staying outside the parks, like I mentioned, some of the places by Groveland on Highway 120 would be Yosemite Lakes, Yosemite Ridge Resort, Yosemite Pines. Oh, we were at Yosemite Ridge Resort. And then off of 140 from Al Portal, there's an Indian Flat RV Park out that way. And then on Highway 41 going down through Mariposa Grove area on Wawona, um, Oakhurst is the name of a town where there's a couple different lodging options. So that's some of your camping options, especially for in a larger RV. 
So there's our synopsis of Yosemite National Park. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. You can also ask us questions or leave comments below. We try to respond to every single one of those. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at RV Homeschool and subscribe if you want to see more videos of national parks, RV ownership, and other fun RV travel stuff with your kids. Thanks so much for watching and safe travels.